Let's look at the hyperbolic secant function. As I've said before, we have many parallels between the hyperbolic functions and the regular trig functions. So we define the hyperbolic secant to be the reciprocal of the hyperbolic cosine. So as we know before, its definition is just two divided by e to the x plus e to the negative x. Now, just like the hyperbolic cosine, the hyperbolic secant is an even function. And so when we think about the graphs, they're both even. I've dotted in the hyperbolic uh, cosine uh, function here. And when we reciprocate it, we get this curve that looks like a normal curve. That is, we have uh, a horizontal asymptote, y equals zero, or the x-axis, and we have a maximum of one. Clearly a function whose graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, which is what we would expect from an even function. And so what we see here is we have a domain of all real numbers and a range that runs from zero uh, to one, including one, not including zero. Now, in order to compute the derivative of the hyperbolic secant to also give us a nice integral formula, we can just take the derivative of one over hyperbolic cosine. So we can apply the quotient rule. So we'll get zero minus the hyperbolic sine divided by hyperbolic cosine squared. And now let's just spread out the hyperbolic cosine. That'll give us a negative one over hyperbolic cosine times hyperbolic sine divided by hyperbolic cosine. And by definition, this would just be the negative of hyperbolic secant times hyperbolic tangent. So that really looks very similar to the derivative of secant, which is just secant tangent, except we have the negative sign. Now, we notice here that this function is clearly not one-to-one. -one. So just like what we've done with regular trig functions, uh, we want to restrict the domain. So what the convention is, is to restrict to uh, zero to infinity to give us this branch here so that the, the inverse function, which is going to run this way, will be the positive branch. That's going to basically tell us which sign of the radical to choose later. So what we do is we solve for x as we've done before. So we cross multiply here from the definition and we get y e to the x plus y e to the negative x equal two. And then the same routine as we had before, we want to create quadratic in e to the x. So we multiply this equation by e to the x and we get y times e to the x squared plus y equal two e to the x. Of course, the e to the x multiplied here just gives us the one times y. And now put everything on one side, we get y times e to the x squared plus a negative two times e to the x plus y equals zero. So we can compute the discriminant. So we'll have negative two squared minus four times ac y times y, which will give us four times one minus y squared. Then because we have quadratic and e to the x by the quadratic formula, we have e to the x equals the opposite of b, that'll be a positive two, plus or minus the square root of the discriminant divided by 2a. And of course, all the twos absorb. And like I said before, we will select the positive radical here so we can get the positive branch uh, in the uh, inverse function. And so this will give us e to the x equal one plus the square root of one minus y squared uh, divided by y. And now of course, What's a logarithm? It's a power of the base. So x, or our inverse hyperbolic secant function of y, will be the natural log of one plus the square root of one minus y squared divided by y, where of course y lives between zero and one. Now what we wanna do from this point in the next video is to utilize this formula to find the actual uh, derivative of the uh, inverse hyperbolic secant. And we are done.